Okay, welcome to calculus class. In this class, we're going to discuss about fractional exponent and radicals. This is the review of uh, college algebra before we start our calculus uh, topics. So again, this is unit one, lecture number three. So our main objective is to understand the meaning of nth root. Also, we're going to learn how to evaluate expressions of the form a raised to the power m by n. So the exponent will be a fraction. Also, we are going to simplify expressions using the properties of fractional exponents. Again, simplify expressions using the properties of fractional exponents. So this is the continuation of our previous lectures. In the previous lectures, we went through the exponents, which are integers. This time we will go to the exponent rules, which are fractions, so fractional exponents. So here we say for any positive real number a, and also any positive integer n, the number denoted a raised to the power one by n is a positive real number called the principal nth root of a. And so if we remember a root sign, exponent is always one over the value. So for example, a square root, the exponent will be one over two, cube root to be one over three. So that's why we say the number denoted a raised to the power one over n is a positive real number called the principal nth root of a. And we write this a to the power one over n, which is our exponent to the power n again. We went through the rules of multiplication of exponents. So if an exponent raised to another exponent, we're going to multiply. So one n multiplied by n will give me one because the n will cancel each other. So that's why we say a raised to the power one n to the power n is the same as a. Next, we're going to evaluate the following square root. Again, exponent raised to the power half is called a square root. So this means what two numbers that if we multiply, we will get 81, uh, which will be nine because nine times nine is 81. So the square root of 81 is nine. Nine square is 81. So the solution we have 81 to the power half is equal to nine because if the exponent is half, the root is called square root with the understanding that it is non-negative. So here in calculus and college algebra, a square root value always have to be positive unless we are talking about complex numbers which have a real part and an imaginary part. But here in college algebra and calculus, we are dealing with real numbers. So square root values always have to be non-negative. So nine is the square root or positive square root or principal square root of 81. But if I have negative nine square, the answer also will give me 81. So this means 81 has two square roots. It can either be negative nine which is called the negative square root of 81. But again, when we are looking for a square root of a value, that value have to be positive. So for example, square root of four, the answer can be positive and negative two, positive two, negative two. But we cannot find the square root of a negative four. They have to be positive. So here we say, remember that the notation 81 to the power half is indicate the positive square root. Uh, another example, we have 125 to the power one third. So one third is also the same as cube root, cube root. So this means what number, if we multiply three times, we will get 125. And in this case, it will be five because five times five, is 25 times 5 is 125. So the cube root of 125 is 5. So these are some of the few rules for fractional exponents. Here, we first thing we say the base always have to be greater than 0. Then we have 1, a to the power 1 by n. It's a positive real numbers. So the first rule here said, if we have a to the power 1 over n, 
or we'll say n root to the power n, we are going to multiply n to the power root n or one over n times n, which will give us one. So a raised to the power one over n to the power n, the answer is one. Now, if a is less than zero and n is even number, then a raised to the power one over n is not a real number. So we say the root number always have to be again, and uh, the number for the root it have to always have to be positive. Now, if a raised to, uh, less than zero and n is a hard number, yes, then here we have an answer. So it's a negative real number. So what we are trying to say is that, for example, uh, square root of negative four, there's no answer undefined. But cube root of negative eight, the answer will be negative two. So that's what we mean by even and odd. If the root is even number, then it's not a real number. But if the root is odd, then we have a negative real number. So negative uh, cube root of negative 27 will give me negative three. So the general form will be a raised to the power n by n. So a raised to the power n by n is the same as writing a to the power one over n times m. Or we can say a raised to the power m to the power one over n is the same. When we multiply the two, we get m over n. So let's try another example here. Yeah, they say we should simplify each expression. First, we have a to the power two third. Now I can break this into two because I know one third will give me keep root and the keep root of eight is two. So here we are going to have eight one third and to the power two. The answer here will give me two, so it will be two square. Keep root of eight is two and it will be two square. So finally, my answer will be four. Or we can say, okay, eight, eight to the power two third. We can say eight square one third. Then when we find eight square, we get 64. Then the keep root of 64 again is the same four. So let's try another example, 81, three fourth. So the solution here, we can say 81 1 fourth to the power three. Then we know three times three times three times three, four times we uh, give us 81. So 81 to the power one fourth, we give me three. Then three cube, we give me 27. Or 81 three fourth, we get 81 cube to the power one fourth. So 81 cube, when we multiply 81 three times, we get 531,441 to the power one fourth. And when we find one fourth of it, we get 27. The best way is the first example, we want to use smaller values instead of bigger values. But either one, the answer is correct. So we have another example here. Now we know that when we have a multiplication of two items and the base is the same, we had the exponent. So whether it's an integer or fraction, we still had the exponent. So this means we are going to get one third plus one six. We can find the LCM and we get six. So three can go into six is two times one is two. So we get to six plus one six and that will give us three six. And we can reduce it to half. So our answer will be X to the power half. So again, this is multiplication. So we had the exponents, one third plus one six, and that will give us half. So another example again, we still have multiplication here, X to the power negative three fourth times s to the power one third or square. So we have two options. If we like, we can multiply the square to each of the exponent, 
all the best way I will do is to combine, since we have the same base x and x, we can add their exponents. The answer we get, we multiply by two. So here we had the exponent first. We have four and three, so the LCM will be 12. And four can go into 12 is three times the numerator three, that will give me nine. Three can go into 12 is four times one, which is four. Then I'm going to add the exponent, so I'll get uh, nine. Nine plus four and negative nine, 12 plus four by 12, because again, this is negative three fourth. So we get negative nine plus four will give me negative five by 12. Then we can multiply the exponent. So we get negative 10 over 12. We can reduce it to five, six. And if we like, we can take it down to change the positive and uh, negative exponent to positive. So we can get one over S five, six by changing again, the sign from negative to positive. So we look at the radical notation. As we said earlier, any exponent that is one over any value is a root. So a to the power one over n is root n. So if it's two square root, if it's three cube root, etc. So a to the power one n is the root n of a. So here we have a question x to the power two third. And here they say we should convert it to radical notation. So this means I can take, I can break two third down to two times one third. So I'll get a cube root of x squared. So we get cube root of x squared because two by three is the same as saying one third, which is the cube root, then square x squared. Now B, we have x squared plus one to the power half. Uh, so here again, we are changing it to radical sign. This is very straightforward because everything raised to the power half. So it will be square root of everything. So square root of x squared plus one. Next, we have the half s plus two raised to the power negative half. Again, the same question we are converting to radical notation. So we will keep the half, half is a constant value and we can change the negative sign to positive. So we get uh, half one over S plus two to the power half. So this is what we get one over S plus two to the power half. And uh, so this will give us one times one is one. So we get two square, ro square root of S plus two. So one over two times square root of S plus two. Uh, here also they say we should con convert to exponential notation. So we are doing the opposite now. So we know a square root means half. So everything will be raised to the power half. Here also is a cube root. So it will be Y square divided by three. So the answer will be eight y squared divided by three, eight y to the power two third. Here they say we should also conversion to exponential notation. So we are going to have keep root, we change it to one third. Keep root is one third. And then if you like, we can bring the one third up. So we change it to SZQ plus one, negative one third. Or we can leave it, at, leave it as one over Z cube plus one to the power one third. So next is the properties of square root. Now here we say that if A and B are positive real numbers, then square root of A and B is the same as writing square root of A times square root of B or square root of A divided by B is the same as saying square root of A divided by square root of B. That's if both are positive real numbers. So let's see an example. We have square root of A plus B is the same as saying square root of A plus square root of B. Now we say that 
let A equal to 64 and B equal to 36. We want to check if the two are the same. So square root of A plus B will give me 64 plus 36 and then square root of 100 Square root of 100 is 10 because 64 plus 36 is 100. Square root of 100 is 10. Now, square root of A plus square root of B, 8 plus 6. Because what will happen? We get square root of 64, which will be 8. Square root of 36, which will be 6. So the answer will be 14. So the two are not the same. Only for multiplication or division. So square root of a b is the same as square root of a times square root of b. Or square root a divided by b is the same as a square root of a divided by square root of b. It works for multiplication division. It doesn't work for addition subtraction. So square root of a plus b is not the same as square root of a plus square root of b. They are different answers. So here also we have a square root of a squared plus b squared. We want to see if it's the same as a plus b. And also it's not the same. This only will work for division and multiplication. It doesn't work for addition and subtraction. But let's try it here. They give us the question a should be eight, b should be six. So square root of a squared plus b squared will give me eight squared plus six squared, which will be 64 plus 36. Square root of 100 will give me 10. And then the second we have a plus b, which will give me 14. So again, it will work for only division and multiplication. So this is a radical notation. If I have a plus b all square, we cannot say it's the same as a square plus b square. Let's check. Again, it's not the same. So let a equal to c, 6 b equal to 8. Now we have a plus b all square, which means I'll get 6 plus 8 all square. The answer will be 14 square, and I'll get 196. Next, we have a square plus b square. That will be 6 square plus 8 square. That will give me 36 plus 64, and that will give me 100. They are not equal. So again, that will be the conclusion of these lectures. Again, these lectures, we went through fractional exponents and also radicals. So again, wish everybody the best and see you in the next lectures.